last time we talked about uh, finding, looking at a graph and saying where is it concave up or where is it concave down. I'm going to start off by doing the same thing but not looking at the graph, looking at an equation. Can you do it if all I give you is an equation? Here's a function. You tell me where is it concave up or down. Just This is just like the questions where is it increasing or decreasing. Um, I want the answer to be in terms of intervals. And the way you do it is exactly the same, only instead of asking about the first derivative, where is the derivative positive or negative, that's increasing, decreasing. You do the same stuff, but using the second derivative. So let's just do it. Um, first, we'll find the second derivative, which will involve finding the first derivative first. This is their function, 4x cubed minus 24x squared plus 36x. That's the first derivative. What's the second derivative? You just do the derivative again. 12x squared minus 48x plus 36. All right. This is the second derivative, and we're going to do that same kind of a chart that we did with the increasing decreasing business. Um, remember the steps for that. The first was find the first derivative. We're going to do the second derivative um, and simplify as much as you can. This you can factor some stuff. You can factor out a 12 from that whole thing x squared minus 4x plus 3, and then you can factor this also. 12 times x minus, oh, what is that going to be? Minus 3 and minus 1, right? Okay, this is the second derivative. Next, we should look for times, points where the second derivative does not exist or where the second derivative equals 0. These will be possible inflection points, that is, points where the concavity switches from up to down or down to up. As usual, this function always exists, this right here, this uh, there is no time when the second derivative does not exist there are times when the second derivative equals zero f double prime equals zero when does that happen it happens when 12 times x minus 3 times x minus 1 equals zero this is all factored so you can immediately divide both sides by 12 and get rid of it and you say x minus 3 equals zero x minus 1 equals zero which means x equal 3 or x equal 1. These are my two solutions. So these two points are going to be the inflection points. At least they might be inflection points. These are places where the concavity will switch from down to up or up to down. Let's make our little chart, and that should do it for us. All right, the two points of interest in this uh, function were 1 and 3. These are places where the second derivative equals 0. Now I'm going to plug in points in between these guys and see with which it is. The second derivative is it positive or negative. Let's try 0 to the left of 1. F double prime of 0 is 12 times 0 minus 3 times 0 minus 1. This is positive, negative, negative. So this whole thing, um, the product of a positive times a negative times a negative is a positive. All right. In here, let's choose 2, 12 times 2 minus 3 times 2 minus 1. This is positive, negative, positive. So this whole thing is a negative. Over here, let's choose 4. 12 times 4 minus 3 times 4 minus 1. Positive, positive, positive. This is positive. All right. Uh, that'll do it. My final answer to the question, remember, was give me intervals where, um, on which the function is concave up or concave down. The second derivative we know is positive here and positive here. That's where it's concave up. So my answer is concave up on the interval minus infinity to, uh, to 1. That's this, this region here. Minus infinity to 1. And 3 to infinity. That's this region and concave down dun, dun is what I meant to write concave dun on the interval in the middle one to three that's it as always you can graph this to check your answer let's see that let's see if the picture looks good computer on here. Let's see how we do it. All right. My function was
Here we go. So it looks like this, it's kind of hard to see this picture because it's zoomed in in a weird way. Overall, it has this shape, but it has this little bumpity bump in the middle. Anyway, what did we say for our answer? We said it was concave up from minus infinity to one. That is from here over to the left. It has this shape, concave up. We said from one to three, it's concave down. That would be from here to here. It has this concave down shape. And then from three to four, concave up again. Not three to four, three to infinity kind of gave up again. All right, checks out, looks good to me. That'll do us. All this stuff about the concavity, concave up or concave down, you can actually use this as another way of figuring out whether a point is a relative minimum or a relative maximum. This is called the second derivative test. Remember before we talked about the first derivative test for identifying the relative extrema. The second derivative test is another method which is sometimes easier to do. Um, and it has to do with the concavity. It's a fairly uh, obvious point once it's brought to your attention. Um, if x is a relative, well, let me say, a critical number, it still involves the critical numbers, right? A critical number and f double prime of x is positive, then, don't need a comma there, uh, x is a relative minimum. Why is that? Uh, it's because, let's just think this through, if x is a critical number and the derivative, the second derivative is positive, what that means is, you know, the question is, is it one of these or one of these when it comes to deciding is it a minimum or a maximum? Is it one of these or one of these? Well, you can tell the difference if you know what the second derivative, if the second derivative is positive, that means it's concave up, which means the curve has to look like this, which means it's one of these, which means it's a minimum, all right? So if the second derivative is positive, it's one of these, the smiley, which means that this point is a relative minimum. And the same is true, not the same, but uh, you know, conversely, blah, 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 blah. if x, uh, if the second derivative is negative, that means the curve is concave down, which means it looks like this, which means your point is a maximum. This is called the second derivative test. It's a way of telling whether or not a point is a relative minimum or a relative maximum. The downside of the second derivative test is this last part. If f double prime of x equals zero, then we don't know. All right, uh, in this case, the second derivative does not tell you whether it's a minimum or maximum. And the only thing that you can do in this situation is go back and use the first derivative test. The first derivative test, remember, is when you make that chart with the increasing, decreasing, and then if it goes increasing and then decreasing, that's a uh, maximum. If it goes decreasing and then increasing, that's a minimum. The first derivative test always works. The second derivative test usually works. Uh, in, in the practice, this almost never happens, and so you'll get your answer from either of these. If this does happen, though, you'll have to go back and do the first derivative test instead. Let's try some examples. First example, find and identify the relative extrema of blah, 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 this function. Okay. Um, if that's the question, then I've sort of, I'm leaving it up to you whether you want to use the first derivative test or the second derivative test. Both of those, those are just two different methods for answering this kind of question. Um, just because it's what we're talking about today, I'm going to do the second derivative test. I think it's slightly easier to do. There's a, a, a bit fewer steps. Anyway, what are we going to do? First, find the critical numbers. That's the same as in the first derivative test, but then you don't have to make that chart thing. Um, let's do the critical numbers first. Uh, in order to do that, first you find the derivative. You take the derivative. Let's do it. 12x squared plus 14x minus uh, 10, right? The 8 goes away. Now, factor and simplify this as much as you can. Um, you can't factor the 12 out, unfortunately. You can factor 2 out of this, though, right? 2 times 6x plus 7, 6x squared plus 7x minus 5. And now, can you factor this? This is a, one of those slightly harder factoring because you've got a coefficient on the front. We can handle that though, right? 
it's going to be uh, on the front. So it's going to look like two times something X and something else, and then something X and then something else. These two things have to multiply to give you five, so they have to be one and five. One of them will be positive, one of them will be negative. I need to choose things in the front here. It can either be a six and a one, or one and a six, or two and a three, or three and a two. And it has to work out so that you get seven when you um, when you add everything up. And I think what I want is a two. If I can do two and a three, three and a two. What do I got? I got to make seven. So if I did two, yeah, yeah, yeah. How about this? Two here, three here with a minus there and a plus there. Now on the front I get six. From the outside we get 10x plus 10x and then here we get minus 3x which adds up to 7x and then on the end we get negative five. All right, I hope you remember how to do that. This is something that you, know, you must have learned at some point in your life. Anyway, we're trying to find the critical number so we're gonna set this equal to zero. F prime equals zero when? Well, when this equals zero. So two times two x minus one times three x plus five equals zero and we uh, solve for x of uh, the two you can just get rid of the two you can divide both sides by two and it disappears here I say 2x minus 1 equals 0 or 3x plus 5 equals 0 uh, solve each of these uh, add the one here and divide by 2 x equals 1 half here you subtract 5 and divide by 3 x equals negative 5 over 3 all right these are the critical numbers those are points when the derivative is zero. You should also check when the derivative does not exist. That never happens because this derivative here always exists. It's a polynomial. Okay, so these are the critical numbers. Now, because I'm doing the second derivative test, I'm not gonna make that chart. We're just going to use the second derivative. So we had two critical numbers. They were x equal one half and also x equals uh, minus five over three. Anyway, remember what the second derivative test says. Our problem is to tell, is this a maximum or minimum? Is this a maximum or a minimum? The second derivative test says, when you plug into the second derivative, f double prime of x, if f double prime of x is positive, then that means the shape is like this, which means it's a minimum. If f double prime is negative, the shape is like this, which means it's a maximum. So um, let's first of all figure out what is the second derivative. That's not hard. Uh, the first derivative we already had was 12, what is it? I'm gonna use the unsimplified version. 12x squared plus 14x minus 10. This is a little easier to take the derivative of. So the second derivative, you do the derivative of this again, you get 24x plus 14, okay? So right here, I'm gonna go f double prime of 1 half. You plug this into the second derivative and you need to check if it's positive or negative. So this is 24 times 1 half plus 14. What is that? 24 times a half is 12 plus 14 is positive, right? That's whatever that is, 26. Anyway, positive. So x equal one half is a relative minimum. All right, because that's what the second derivative test says. It says if you plug it into the second derivative and you get a positive, that means it's a relative minimum because second derivative being positive means it's a smiley rather than the frowning, which means your point is on the bottom. So x equal one half is a relative minimum for this function. Okay, let's do it. Same thing for this one, negative five thirds. You plug into the second derivative, f double prime of minus five thirds is, plug it in, plug it in, 24 times minus five over three plus 14. Is that positive or negative? Uh, this is a slight pain to do, but you can, you can multiply the fraction, right? 24 times um, the three in the denominator turns out into a six. Six times negative five plus 14. That's negative 30 plus 14, which is negative something, negative 16, isn't it? Anyway, this is negative, so that means x equal negative five thirds is a relative maximum because that's what the second derivative test said. If it's uh, negative, it's a relative maximum. That's how it goes. Uh, slightly nicer in this case, I think, to do it with the second derivative because you don't have to make that chart of the first derivative values, although it's not a big difference.
All right, I hope that example was clear enough. I just wanted to write down the steps for doing the second derivative test so you can sort of see it in your notes if you like writing things down in that way. So the second derivative test is for finding relative extrema. And it is an alternative to the first derivative test. They both do exactly the same. They, they're meant to solve the same problem. They answer the same question. There's just two different ways of doing it. Second derivative test is often easier. Anyway, uh, here's the method, the steps. So just like uh, before in the first derivative test, the first thing to do is find f prime of x and simplify as much as you can. Also find the second derivative. You just, whatever that was, you take the derivative again. Next step, find the critical numbers. These, remember, are the points where the first derivative is zero or the first derivative does not exist, the critical numbers. Then plug each critical number into the second derivative. Right? Plug each critical number into the second derivative. And then the last step, sort of how you interpret your answer, it doesn't matter what the number is here, but it matters if it's positive or negative. If the second derivative is positive, then it's a relative minimum. Remember, that's because second derivative is positive means the smiley shape, and so your point is on the bottom. If f double prime is less than zero, it's a relative maximum. And if f double prime equals zero, or it's possible f double prime does not exist, then you don't know. And in that situation, you, you failed to uh, answer the question, and so you have to go back and use the first derivative test. Sorry, I'm getting a little in the corner here. Right, uh, if, if this doesn't work, then you have to go back and use the first derivative test. The first derivative test always works. Uh, so in that sense, the first derivative test is, uh, you could say, a little bit better than this one because it, there's no failure case. But this one, generally speaking, is a little easier to do. You don't have to make that whole chart, whatever. All right, that's the second derivative test.